What's up, it's the Gemma, and welcome back to my channel. Promises rule the world of JavaScript. Without promises, we wouldn't be able to do practically anything with our web applications or mobile apps or anything that's built with JavaScript. Since promises are such a core concept in JavaScript, I'm gonna be walking you through the basics of the data type. So by the end of this video, you should know what promises are and why they exist. We'll also create our own promise so we can get a better understanding of what promises exactly do. And towards the end of this video, we'll walk through a practical real world example so it becomes even more clear how you should be using promises. So with that being said, let's get started. So what is a promise exactly and why do JavaScript developers talk about it literally every second? Well, according to the official MDM definition, a promise is a proxy for a value that's not necessarily known when the promise is created. Promises act as placeholders for non-resolved data. They're commonly used when requesting data from non-local servers. Like when you are requesting data using an API, you have to wait on a response from that server. There's always gonna be latency whenever making network requests. So JavaScript handles the waiting process with a promise object. So to make this explanation a little bit more clear, let's create our own promise. To create a new promise, we use the class constructor syntax, and the only parameter that the constructor takes in is a callback function typically called executor. Executor gets called right when you create that promise. This callback function takes in two parameters, which are also callback functions called resolve and reject. Inside the executor callback, you can define whatever logic that makes sense to live inside of a promise. And remember that it gets executed right when you create that promise. So in this code block, I create a set timeout for 250 milliseconds. And when the time is up, I pass the string all looks good into our resolve function. The resolve function is responsible for returning the final value from the promise. This is always the data that the user is expecting when they create a new promise. But if an error is thrown inside the logic that you created inside of that promise, it's up to you to catch that error and pass it into the reject function, which will get passed back out to the user. If we print out our newly created promise object, we'll see something like promise pending. At the time that the promise was generated, the data that we were expecting was unavailable, therefore the state of this promise is pending. Even if you build out a promise that instantly returns a value with no other logic, the status will still be pending right when you create that promise. And since we're on the topic of promises states, there are three states in total that are related to promise objects. So the first one that we already talked about is pending, and this is always the initial state of a newly created promise. The second state is fulfilled, and this occurs when the promise is successful at resolving data, or when the resolve method was called. And the third state is rejected, which is triggered when an error occurs inside of the promise or when the reject function is called. Okay, so now we know how to create our own promises. We can define whatever logic we want inside of a promise, but how do we get access to the data that we resolve or reject internally? The promise object has a number of built-in methods that allow us to grab hold of the expected return data. But in this video, we're only gonna be taking a look at the two most popular, which is then and catch. The promises built-in then method gets called whenever the internal resolve or reject method gets called inside of the chain promise. Then takes in two parameters, the first one being on fulfilled and the second optional parameter is on rejected, both of which are callback functions that only take in one parameter. So when the promise is fulfilled or when the internal resolve method is called, the return value will get exposed as the first argument in our callback function on fulfilled. Here I name that argument result. Now that I have access to result, I can do whatever I want with it, so I just print out a console message. If the promise is rejected, meaning the internal reject method got called, the rejected value will get exposed as the only argument in our second callback, which is on rejected. And in this code block, I named it error. The promise catch method gets called whenever an error is thrown inside of that promise and is not catched internally. It's super important to point out that the catch method doesn't get called when the internal reject method gets called. A rejected value, which is a value that you passed into the reject method versus an uncaught or unhandled error are two completely separate concepts. So when an error is thrown and not caught inside that promise object, it's gonna bubble up and be caught by the promises catch method. One of the great thing about promises and its built-in methods is that each time you call these built-in methods, they return a newly generated promise object. This is really great for us because it allows us to do something called chaining, which allows us to append function calls onto function calls for promises. And this just provides a ton more flexibility on how we wanna handle our own data. Let me walk you through an example so this becomes a little bit more clear. So my promise resolves this string Chloe and that gets passed into the first then method. I can append some more text to that string and return it. The newly constructed string is now passed onto the next then method, and this process will continue down the chain. 
Even the catch method returns a promise, so you could technically chain another then on it, but it's best practice to have your catch method at the end of your promise blocks, so you can catch any errors that might occur from the preceding then blocks. So by this point, you should start understanding how to create your own promise and also how to grab hold of the data that's inside of these promise objects. I'm gonna wrap this video up by walking through a really concrete example that will help solidify the idea of promises for you. So let's say that I wanted to grab all my tweets from Twitter using the Twitter API. In order for me to do that, I'll have to make a request to the Twitter API and wait on a response from the platform. The instant response that I get from Twitter isn't data that contains any of my tweets. Rather, it's just a promise object. And once that promise is fulfilled, I'll have access to all my tweets. So I'm gonna walk you through a high-level code block example for this. So here I use the method fetch, which is the web's fetch method. This allows us to make network requests to literally any API or site. So I'm gonna be using it for the Twitter API. The fetch method returns back a promise, so I can call its then method, where I have access to response, which is the object that Twitter handed to me. I first check to see if the response's status is 200, meaning the request was successful. If the request was successful, I can grab hold of my tweets from response.data and then assign this value to my variable, my tweets, which I can then use throughout my app. Promises are powerful objects that allow you to work with asynchronous code. There's a lot more to know about promises, but for this video, I wanted to give you the basics so you can feel comfortable using them in your projects. As always, if you made it this far, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm also on Twitter where I talk about whatever I want to talk about, but mostly JavaScript stuff. You can also DM me so we can talk and just have a chat. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.